A while ago, a friend asked me the question, would a bullet dropped on the moon fall at the same speed as one that was shot horizontally from a gun? I confirm that this is indeed a true fact if you ignore the curvature of the moon, after which he was completely astounded. This is because, in a vacuum, vertical velocity is completely independent from the horizontal velocity. But now that I think back at the scenario, I can see why this would be an intuitive idea. We all naturally understand that when something is already moving fast, it's more difficult to make it go even faster. This is because, said more math mathematically, since the kinetic energy of an object is proportional to the square of the velocity, a set amount of energy, like this, increases the velocity of an object a lot less when the velocity is already high. as you can see from the differing widths of these two regions. This is why it seems weird that the same force of gravity can move both bullets the same amount. But the difference is that this force is adding velocity in the other direction, at a right angle. So the existing speed and kinetic energy of the object makes no difference, and it's this idea of adding velocities in a perpendicular direction that led me to come up with this proof of the Pythagorean theorem. Imagine an object with mass m that's floating in a vacuum. Now if we accelerate it horizontally to a speed of a, not to, be, not to be confused with acceleration, it has a total kinetic energy of half m a squared. Now imagine we add velocity perpendicularly, causing it to also move vertically at a velocity of b. The amount of energy added this time is half mb squared. And this means that the total amount of energy that has put into this object is half ma squared plus half mb squared. The combination of the horizontal velocity and the vertical velocity causes a net movement in a diagonal direction at a speed that's slightly faster than both a and b, which we will call c. This means a right triangle is created when using the three velocities as side lengths. What we can do now is use the fact that energy must be conserved to prove the Pythagorean theorem must be true. We know that the en amount of energy put into the object must equal the amount of energy it has at the end, so half ma squared plus half mb squared must equal half mc squared. This creates a relationship between the three speeds, and since they're the sides of a right triangle, by dividing both sides by half m, we end up with the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now granted, this alone is a complete proof, since I'm only talking about the relationship of velocities and not distances. But the rest is trivial and will be left as an exercise to the viewer. And the cat has decided to come on the table. She's a very affectionate creature, as some would say.